has bottomed at this point? I do think it has. Uh, we saw prices down in the $25 a barrel range last month, and that feels like uh, we've seen the lows. We, we, we think we're going to see, I think, meaningfully better prices over the next 18 months or so. Uh, and what kind of sustained rally do you think we will see? Yeah, I think the basically oil needs to go back to the point where the industry stops stop shrinking and contracting in on itself. And so we feel like something in the 60s or 70s is the point at which there's enough cash flow in the business to generate production growth, to generate that supply that, that the world needs. Demand's growing pretty consistently, probably will grow a million barrels a day in 2016 and 2017. So we're going to have to have higher prices to support that, something in the 60s or 70s. So that's 2017, 2018, but there's a lot of months to get through in the meantime. Uh, right now, we're at that really sexy time, bank redetermination. So basically, banks reassess how much money they're willing to lend to energy companies based on the reserves that they have in the ground. Uh, we've been waiting for huge cuts to happen. We haven't seen them yet in other uh, bank shifting seasons. What are you expecting this go round? I think it's definitely going to be tougher. So the duration of commodity prices down here at uh, below 40 is hurting the industry. It's going to be a very tough 2016. The banks are essentially asking the companies to pay them back. They don't have a lot of cash to do that. And so we would expect that more assets are going to be on the market. We've already seen some bankruptcies. We're going to see some more. So it's definitely a tough uh, 2016 before we see the impacts of these higher commodity prices down the road. My big question uh, in the future is how do oil companies, natural gas companies, get their funding? And I asked that question uh, to Tom Ward, the CEO of Tapstone Energy, the ex-co-founder of Chesapeake Energy, and I said, look, are investors really going to allow companies to pile on that much debt in the future? Here's what he had to say. I do. Why? Because most investors are greedy. And, and so as prices move up over time, uh, it'll be a, 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 you know, a time again that, that you can invest in the business. It might be some time. It might be years. Do you agree with that? Uh, probably I do. I think investors do have short memories. And when this business starts to grow again, when prices are better, right, if oil's 40 and headed to 70, that means we're going to see a, a meaningful increase in price and cash flows, and that's going to pull people back in. Will they be more prudent? Absolutely. Uh, but will they be back? I think they will be. Do you think that them being more prudent affects their ability to produce the same amount of oil that we're used to? I mean, does that supply dynamic change a bit? I think it will. I think it'll be a lot tougher to grow as quickly as we grew do during the 2010 to 2014 time period. So in the U.S., we grew about a million barrels a day each year for four years in a row. Uh, we'll probably lose a million barrels a day. Uh, from the peak hmm. to the end of 16. So it's going to be tough to turn that and grow quickly, particularly with the memory of, of how folks are getting burned now. Yeah, and looking at sort of what's been happening to the rig count, I mean, uh, it's been slashed so tremendously. In some areas, for example, Chesapeake has no rigs anywhere. Uh, do you think that we ever get to the big rig count bonanza that we did before as the capital rules change? Well, I think that, that rigs are getting more efficient and the companies are getting smarter, so I think we're going to need fewer rigs to accomplish what we accomplished during the, the last up cycle. And so um, never say never. I think it will be a while before we get back to 2,000-plus rigs in, in the U.S. Uh, and, and, but I do think that the current levels, which are probably going to bottom under 400, certainly are going to have to increase. Okay, so you do see the capital market really opening back up 2017, 2018. In the meantime, it's going to be hard for the guys that have a lot of debt. What we have seen, though, is a lot of companies getting creative. They've issued more equity. They've turned to second lien loans. Uh, Alliance Bernstein is also uh, creating a fund that is going to give money to uh, energy companies because banks have closed their doors. What do you think about these alternative financings? Well, I think it's a function of when the traditional uh, markets get tough, uh, the non-traditional markets emerge, and so I think it's it's an example of capitalism at work, and I think it makes a ton of sense. The money's more expensive, it's more difficult, it's only going to some of the better companies, but it, it is out there if you're scratching and clawing for it and willing to pay up for it. So I think it's it's a natural outgrowth of kind of the traditional channels being much tougher than they have been. But what are the long-term ramifications? Because you wind up having, say, PE guys who now own a big chunk of an E&P firm, or you wind up having second lien loans that push down more debt holders into the subordinated uh, world. I mean, doesn't that wind up hurting financing going forward? 
Well, I think what it says is that some of the money that's been invested so far is lost, and the, the new mm -hmm. financiers will, will make returns from, from the new money. So I think that you know the reality of 25 to 40 dollar oil is people have lost money and it's going to be tough to get that back. So I think that the new owners have uh, more rigorous uh, controls in place and so I think that that will slow growth going forward but I don't think it's going to choke off capital. I don't think it's going to choke off you know sort of the entrepreneurial spirit of the business but it's, it's going to make it tougher and slower at least in the, the near to intermediate term.